Hello. Welcome to Minoka County Library's Family Flavor Cooking Class. My name is Becky. I work here at the Crooked Lake Library in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. At the library, we have a Charlie cart, which we call our Curiosity Kitchen. And we use this kitchen to help families learn to enjoy cooking together and eating the beautiful things that they create. Today on Family Flavor, we're gonna focus on breakfast. We're going to be making mini herbed frittatas. I've included the recipe in the comment section below. You can also find and print out the recipe by going to our website, anokacountylibrary.org, clicking on the calendar, and search for Family Flavor. If you have a special breakfast uh, recipe that you and your family enjoy making and you would like to share that, I'm gonna invite you to do that in the comments below. So a few best practices uh, to keep in mind when you're cooking together as a family with littles or older children, things are gonna get messy. Your recipe is not going to turn out looking like it came from a beautiful restaurant. Um, but enjoy the time that you're spending together and have fun with the process. Always wash your hands. Make sure everybody's hands are clean all the way up to their elbows. Um, make sure your surfaces are all clean and then read the recipe all the way through to make sure that you have everything you need. Get all your stuff out ready and prepped before you even begin. So let's take a look at the ingredients and the utensils you're going to need to make the mini herb frittatas. You'll need some parsley, some basil leaves, and some cilantro. You're going to want some cheese. We're going to be using cheddar today. Five eggs. We're going to be using a half of a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. You're going to want a mixing bowl and some mixing spoons and a one cup measuring cup. You'll probably want one sharp knife that you'll be in charge of and a grater. And the last thing you're going to need are the, the little baking cups. These are wonderful little silicone baking cups that we use here so we can reuse them. Let's get started. Okay, I've washed my hands. My surfaces are clean. We've gathered all the things that we need. I have washed and dried the herbs just so they're clean and, and um, ready to go. We're going to heat our oven. The, the oven gets set at 375 degrees. We'll be cooking for 20 minutes. Just gonna reach around and start that so it gets a chance to preheat. You're also going to want to uh, put your silicone cups in a muffin tin or lay them out on a, a cookie sheet. Just get your muffin tin ready. The first thing we're gonna do is get the herbs ready. They have been washed and dried. This is a good time to talk about how they look different. The basil is nice and big. Cilantro is flat. Parsley is curly. And also about what part of the herbs that we eat, because we don't usually eat the stem part, we eat the leaves. So have the kids take the, the, um, the herbs off the stems, and they're gonna start tearing them into ladybug-sized pieces. As you can imagine, this is going to take a little bit of time. It's okay, enjoy your time together. Let them have fun with it. So the next step is going to be to measure and grate the cheese. This is a brick of cheddar cheese. This brick is eight ounces. Our recipe calls for a third of a pound. Now I had to do some Googling to figure out how many ounces are in a third of a pound. And what we came up with was five and one third ounces. I have eight ounces of cheese here. How do I know how much I need? Math. We're gonna do math. So what we're gonna do is cut the cheese into one ounce pieces. And we know that the brick of cheese is eight ounces. So we're gonna cut it into eight pieces. There we go. 
eight pieces. And we need five and a third of these. So one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna cut this piece into three. Those we can set aside for a different recipe. And now we know that we have a third of a pound of cheese to grate. Little, little, littles are going to need extra help with this. You wanna be very careful not to get your fingers really close to this. But we're just gonna go ahead and grate the cheese. You can also just buy it grated in a bag. The next step is to crack the eggs into the bowl. And if you get shells in there, it's okay. They're not terribly difficult to get out. But if you do get shells in there, you wanna make sure you take them out before you get too much farther. There's three. our wire whisk and we're going to break the egg yolks and whisk them together. By whisking you're introducing air into the eggs and making them light and fluffy. You'll know they're about ready when it all looks the same color. Now we're going to add our spices. We're going to add recipe. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of paprika, which is the red one. Now when you're measuring, you want to make sure that the, the whole uh, measuring cup is filled and then you even it off. That's how you know you've got an accurate measurement. So a half a teaspoon of paprika, quarter teaspoon <laughs> come on pepper sure <laughs> a quarter teaspoon of pepper and a teaspoon of salt We're going to mix those together. And kids can watch as this changes color. They can help stir. They can make sure all the big clumps are broken up. Excellent. Okay. Now it's time to add some of the stuff we worked on earlier. The next thing we're going to do is the herbs. And we've measured out a cup of herbs and we're gonna put them all in there. And some of those look like very big ladybug pieces. That's okay. We're gonna stir those in. satisfying for people of all ages. Okay. And that's what it looks like. Next we're going to put it in our baking cups. The 
recipe calls for two tablespoons of mixture to go in each one of these cups. We're gonna see how well we do. Sometimes when, I, when we do this at home, it turns out that there's a little bit more. Sometimes it turns out there's a little bit less. That's okay. Everybody can help count. One, two, got a little bit left over that's not going to make another whole one so we'll just put some in where it goes in anything that looks a little bit short so we'll scoop that little bit off of there so we ended up with 10 that's what the recipe calls for sometimes it's more sometimes it's less now let's bake them we're gonna put them in that 20 uh, 375 degree oven for 20 minutes Look at how beautiful those are. And there we have it. This is a really very versatile recipe. You can use a variety of um, chopped vegetables, cheese, meat, um, in substitution of those herbs. Um, you can also make it in a nine by 13 cake pan. The only addition would be as you're beating the eggs, beat in a tablespoon of water with those. Cook it for 20 minutes or until it's cooked through. If you're interested in other delicious recipes, we have oh so many cookbooks in our physical collection that you can request with your library card. Go to anocacountylibrary.org and click on the catalog. We also have cookbooks available in our digital collection that you can check out uh, with the Cloud Library app and your Anoka County Library card. Thanks very much for joining me today on Family Flavor. Have fun cooking together.
recipe calls for two tablespoons of mixture to go in each one of these cups. We're gonna see how well we do. Sometimes when, I, when we do this at home, it turns out that there's a little bit more. Sometimes it turns out there's a little bit less. That's okay. Everybody can help count. One, two, got a little bit left over that's not going to make another whole one so we'll just put some in where it goes in anything that looks a little bit short so we'll scoop that little bit off of there so we ended up with 10 that's what the recipe calls for sometimes it's more sometimes it's less now let's bake them we're gonna put them in that 20 uh, 375 degree oven for 20 minutes